Hey everybody, this is Dave coming to you from the Gaming Cave. Today we're going to start our playthrough of Carrier Battle Philippine Sea. Game designed by John Southard and game published from Compass Games. Okay, all right. So, what we're starting with here for our video series is going to be Scenario 6, Battle of 19 June. And this requires the rule sections 1 through 15. So I've been working through these other ones here for the last couple of weeks. And I have to tell you, there's a lot to it. And we are going to introduce some new rules in this segment. So I may have to do some uh, checking while we're going. Hopefully, um, I'll get the majority of this right. That's what I'm hoping to do anyway. And um, we'll see how this goes. I've done the setup. Um, for the game so that uh, didn't have to waste your time but I will uh, review it a little bit now this is a big footprint as you can see way over there and across the top and then way over here so I will move the camera around and I'm gonna apologize ahead of time because I know when I get playing I get busy and I forget to move the camera sometimes so I'm gonna try not to do that to you Okay, let's start with uh, right now. Uh, this is the Butai uh, sheet, and we don't have anything on it yet. Um, these are just the markers for it. And then um, up in the uh, up here in this top segment, I do have these uh, level one markers set aside. There's two carrier level ones. There's a large force level one. And there's two false contact level ones. Now, the reason I did that is because in our level ones, there's one right there, I'll grab it. We're using the double force counter. So when these come up, it's a double force in that area and we have to add some, something's gonna get added to that. So it could be a double force if those come out. We have our level two counters and then our level uh, threes Okay, so we got all our counters. I got a lot of the aircraft counters But I got more in the bags if I need them so we can keep going uh, over here. We have the uh, pull chips for the activation sequences as we go um, Up here these six are going to be the first six task forces that are going to arrive on the first uh, turn so that's how we'll get started. We're starting on June 19th at 0530, and the game ends at the end of 1850 on the 19th. So that's this period of time that we're playing. My task force starts right here at 1408. And then I put five submarines out, which I haven't used these before yet, so it's another learning curve for me. But I've got the Bang, the Kavala, the Finback, the Albacore, and the Stingray. So um, they can set up anywhere I want, but they have, they have to have at least a space away from any of the um, arrival areas. Okay, so we're set up there. And as we move over, you can see the mission display. I've got my fuel markers, but I don't have mission types yet. I have task group 58-7, which is my battle line. And then I have task groups 58-1, 58-2, 58-3, and 58 4. And then, oh, and I forgot to move up here. Let's see, I was trying to decide uh, what I want to do here. I think down here, I can have up to two aircraft on the flight decks, putting these SB2Cs up there for those. And I'm putting a couple of uh, Hellcats up here on their flight deck uh, for takeoff. I can have up to two on my flight decks. Uh, one of the things that you, for the uh, setup, just so you know, find my card here. We'll be using a lot of the player aid cards, but just so um, carrier operations for a CV, the large carriers, they can only have a total of eight aircraft, their hangar total, the CVLs three. And on their launch or land, they can only have one here, so I can't have two up there. I can only have one. So I got to change that back down to one. Got one there. These, oh, you know what? That was kind of goofy there. Put them on the wrong 
put them in the wrong spot. I don't have an optional carrier there. Let me fix that real quick. Um, these are 58 fours. So I can have three here. I can have one, two, um, three here. And then I had, because this is a CVL, he's a CVL. And so the rest of these guys, these fighters are going to be over here. Right here, 58-4. So I had two, and then I should have one, two, three, four, five. That's seven. Yeah, so they're all set. Over here, I'm not sure what I want to launch yet. So I don't have anybody on the flight deck. Um, I've got these. I've got enough for, let's see, one, two, three, four. I got enough for six patrols to go out at at a couple different phases i don't know if i need eight just yet although they're kind of handy but it depends on where everybody shows up at and i want to have strikes ready to go um i think what i'll do is put two more hellcats here and two more here and i can use them in cap if i want to so i can have those guys ready to go all right so cap can stay up as long as you need them they're just random um, you got to remember this game is, um, and then my, sorry, jumping around a little bit, sorry with the camera, and then my uh, flow chart right here that we're going to be using, the game turn flow chart, uh, we'll be using it all the time, make sure we don't miss a step, so that's very handy. Action phases are tracked here, so there's four phases per, per turn, and a turn is your on your time, so as it moves through the day. So you got to remember it's a little bit of abstract with the um, the counter doesn't represent one F6F, it represents several. When you're on cap, you have planes landing, taking off, refueling, all those things. And then when we send them out on their mission, then that's when they'll um, start tracking their fuel. So I think, um, oh, and the other thing I am using on my ships, uh, on the uh, back of the ships Japanese counters it says additional so I am using that optional rule um, for the scenario that lets us have additional ships and that is here's part of the uh, special rules so we did add that and our commitment threshold moves up to 12 and the commitment limit to 20 those markers are up here at the top of the board let me show you my camera up there so you have a general records track so we have our anti-aircraft fire for all the different task groups we have our commitment uh, limit and our commitment index and commitment threshold so when we reach those then this will start moving uh, use those to keep from getting in too many ships or too many um, aircraft carriers on the board so that's another one that we'll have to work with here also is the commitment level okay as we start to discover some of these things so i think for my setup i'm pretty good here i think we have everything so i think you know what this is uh like us like i'm saying and and uh please bear with me on this this is going to be a little bit of a challenge um there's a lot of steps to this game so we're going to try it i only have to roll one die i am going to use my die cup here just to control where the die goes so when i roll we can see it there all right so the first thing we have to do according to the movement is place new japanese forces and the nice thing is on this they reference all the rules numbers so we can get there okay so we place the new forces so we do this up here on the board this is handy the japanese arrival table is here so we're going to roll we're going to roll for all six of these and i've already added to my oops wrong cup already added to my chip pull cup the different task forces so task force c you can see it also has guam in there it has three of the no-ops in there. It has my uh, U.S. submarines, my U.S. Uh, move. All those are in there. And there are 12. 
and we take that divided by four and it tells us how many chits we pull per phase. So we're going to pull three per phase when we get to that point. So the first thing though is we are going to place the Japanese forces. So we have six forces that we're going to place on the board. We have no idea where they are or what they are. So here comes force A. He is going to be in a five is zone two. So we go zone one. Here's zone two. And now we roll again. And we find out which one of these spaces he's going to be in. And he's going to be in number seven. So that's the first one. It goes right there. All right. Task force B. A four. He's in zone two. He can't be on seven. That's the only limit. He got eight. So seven and eight right there. Okay. Task force C. He got a 10. He's going to be in zone four. That's down here. And that is a one. Okay. So let me drop the camera a little bit so you can see the bottom edge. He's way down here in zone one. Okay. Here we go. Task force D. He gets a 10. He's going to be down here in zone four. Interesting. In number three. Well, he's there. So that's funny. I've rolled out of four. I got the two zones. Okay, here comes task force E, Echo. He is in four. That's back to zone two again. He gets a four. That's here. And I get task force F. Eight. Zone three. All right. Something different. And a ten. So zone three, ten. Right there. Pretty close. All right. Well, that's an interesting spread of the ships. Got two down here. We got two out here and two here. Here's my task force. So a quick count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They could see him. They can't reach him. I'm, I'm, the ten I'm counting because when do I want to make my search? And where do I want to go to make my search for these guys? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's outside that range. One, two, three. Let's go up this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so all these guys are out. So I don't want to launch my search. It's too early. You know, and the question is, do I want to move? Do I not want to move? You know, what do we want to do? Okay, so the next thing we do here on our sequence is fill the sequence chit cup, which I did, and adjust chits per phase marker. So when you add chits to the cup, then it determines how many of the chits you're going to pull per phase. Right now it's at three. Okay. We go to the Japanese movement segment and I'll just show you again because this is our first time and I'll show you a lot, of, a lot of these things. We're on phase one, action phase, segment. There is no air movements. There are no Japanese air raids. So we don't do anything there. So now we come down to roll for mission movement, 7.221, activation segment. So we're going to roll to find out what our mission movement is going to be. Now, a lot of these rules, we don't use them a lot during the training scenarios because they're kind of, they've kind of set things up. Okay. So at the start of each activation segment, you make a single mission movement die roll. This value is used for all mission movement in that segment. When a force uses mission movement, locate the compass arm corresponding to the current mission movement die. Roll for the zone in which the force is located and move the force one hex in that direction. So we're going to roll one time for all these guys. And each one of these zones that these ships are in has a ship pointed like this in the aircraft carrier and it's got a number one to five 
they're going to move that direction. Six to ten, this zone is going to move this direction. You come over here on that same number, one to four goes up, five to eight this way, nine to ten this way. So you can see they're all different depending on what zone you're in. Okay, and all these zones are marked with these little light blue areas. Where, it's, where all these things are at. So as they change zones, they change directions and what they're doing. They get up here, they start coming this way because they're all trying to get off the board here. Okay, that's the invasion zone. So that's where they're trying to get to and we're trying to prevent that. These guys out here are gonna be going that way. So I gotta start thinking about how do I you know, catch these guys down here? And then I got Guam to worry about because there's land-based aircraft at Guam when they show up. All right, so there's a lot. We got a lot to do. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is roll for mission movement. So we're going to roll this die, and it's going to tell us what they're going to do. And it's a two. I'm going to leave that on the board. Okay. Okay, so this value is used for all mission movement. When a force uses mission movement, locate the compass arm and move the force one hex in that direction. So here they go. So we got force B and he gets a two. And he's in this zone here, so two moves him this direction. Force A is in this zone and his arrow's down, so he moves down one. Force E He's in this zone, a two moves him up this way. F is in this zone, and a two moves him up that way. Now, way down here, we got force D, a two moves him this direction, and then force C moves this direction. Okay. Now, I'm going to put all them back, because I wondered about this. Okay, we're going to put all those back. I'm going to put them all back where they were. He was here. Let's see. This guy moved up one. He moved this way. He moved this way. Oops, he was there. Yeah. So, we got B and A, E, F, and C and D. Here's why. The two tells us what they're gonna move, but we don't know who's moving yet. They don't all move at one time. They move when their chits come up. So I caught that right away. Okay, so next segment, so we have a two, and that's gonna be our move. That's the direction everybody's gonna move. Now, how do I mark that? There's probably a way to do that. Hang on just a minute. Okay, so there's not a separate marker, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this red die as my reminder, and I'm gonna put it out here as number two. So that's the number that they're gonna use. Um, that die, my white die could probably stay there, but I'm just gonna use that. That's my identifier for what everybody's gonna do. Okay, now we draw our sequence chits. So over here on our activation segment, we go roll for mission movement, we did. Draw sequence chits. Okay, so now we're gonna draw three chits. We're gonna see Who's going to be going first? So we'll shake these bad boys up. We're going to draw three. So we get one, force A, two, force C, and three, no op. Okay. So we'll take the no op. I'm going to set these, let's see. I think I'll just put them along the edge right here and I can pick them up from there after they're gone. Okay, so now <laughs> we come down and we do Resolve Air Raid Procedure 10.1. So every time before these guys move, they're going to check to see if they're going to do an air raid. If they're going to launch an air raid and there's a roll and a table that we're gonna use for that. So we have to ask ourselves, and there's a flow chart for this, uh, which helped after I did it, 
didn't help me right off the bat <laughs> when I was trying to see what I have to do. Um, but they have this handy dandy little flow chart and it does start here and you say this force have two raids in play. Well, no, is it eligible to launch a raid, carrier force, or a level zero, level one? Well, we don't know because nothing has happened yet. So there's a role here because what could happen is um, it could become suddenly a level one force, which then creates some of these raids and um, some of these other things that start happening for the air raid generation table. But in the rules, they give you the questions to follow. And it says, if this were a carrier force, would it attack me now? Steps A and B. So we look at this potentially eligible to launch a raid. If it already has two raids in progress, it can't. Well, we don't know that. Otherwise, a force is potentially, if is it a carrier force or is it a level zero force or level one, small, medium, large force? Okay, so we know that it could be this because the level zero is what everybody's at now. Does the carrier, does the force discover a target within range? This step uses the air raid generation table card two on the back side to determine if there are any find and wish to attack and rage. Okay, so that brings us to card two back. We're spending a lot of time, but I think it'll be helpful as we work through this. So here's the deal. It is zero, 0530, maximum range is five. Okay, and then we have a die roll modifier for that. And then we have these other range modifiers, which we're not going to have to worry about right now. But it's maximum range is five. So we're talking about, and we'll just go ahead and look because we're talking about all these forces. Force A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's 12 away. Force C down here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's 12 away. There's not going to be any, there's no air raids. Okay, so no air raids. So next thing we do is move force one hex. Okay, so we start with, now we make our move. Force A. Force A, and he's going direction two. Force A is in this zone, his direction is two. That's where he moves. Force C, and A's done. We put his little chit over here. Force C, his direction is two and it is this direction. So he moves this way. And we take force C off of there. Okay. Remove a US advantage. We don't have any. Reduce detection status. We don't have any. Air raid, air return turnaround. We don't have any. We don't have a US move yet. So we don't do that. We don't do our move or unpin combat attack. We didn't draw the Guam. Uh, we don't have a US air movement segment. Um, I don't have any air missions, so I don't adjust any fuel markers. Initiate air searches. No, I can, but I don't want to yet because I don't know where I want to go yet. I got task forces up and I got two down here that are dangerously close to what's going to be happening down here. But I'm not really crazy about launching this yet. Don't have any to move. Resolve air search attempts. Adjust commitment index if needed. Um, air operations for all carriers. So I can launch. Again, I really don't have a need to launch anybody yet because nobody's that close. So I don't launch. Now I can start servicing, moving to ready and servicing. So I am going to do that. I'm going to do it here in task group 58.1. I'm going to raise these SB2Cs up to servicing. And on a CV for servicing, get my uh, card out here. 
on a CV for servicing, I can have two at a time go up. So I'm going to raise both of these SB2Cs up for servicing. Same thing here. I'm going to raise these guys up on the uh, bunker hill. I'm not here. These are my more. These SB2Cs are good because for these searches, because their attack number is a four, which is lower than all the other attack aircraft, which are fives. So I save. I'm saving my attack aircraft. For when I can find these guys and find out what they are. But I'm not ready to launch just yet because I may move my task force, try to get closer to somebody, and then launch my my uh, searches. And I'm just not there yet, I guess. Okay. Uh, so I raised the servicing. I can raise um, hangar to or from servicing. Oh, that, sorry, that's what I was doing. That one was raised servicing to ready. This is hangar two from servicing. Um, I don't think I'm ready to put up fighters just yet. And I got to be careful. This is where it's tricky when you're trying to make your decisions. But we're early in the game. I don't need to get a bunch of stuff clogging up because if I put them in servicing, I determine I need to change from fighters to bombers. Then I got to drop them out, then move them up. All those take a phase to do that. Lower my flight deck to the hangar. Nope, and I'm not landing anybody. So I didn't launch, not doing anything yet. We're still early. Interception, there's none. There's no Japanese attack segment. So no anti-aircraft fire, none of that. US air attack segment, I don't have anything happening there. Clear inoperative flight decks, nope. Clear deck crashes, nope. Advance the phase marker. So now we go to phase two. All right. Phase two. Oops. We come back up. We only do this once per turn, the arrival phase. So now we come to the action phase again. We move, we move all air raids. We don't have any. We roll for mission movement in the activation segment, which we did. Nope. Now we roll that again, I do believe. Going to verify that. Let me check that. Okay, so we got to roll again for this movement. I'll roll right here on the table. Seven. Oh, I got to change this die. I only had a six sided die. <laughs> here, I got a red, nice red right here. And this one is a seven. So we're going to put seven over here, and that's their direction of movement. Okay, so now we're going to draw sequence chits. Here we go. Three chits. First one, U.S. move. Second one, no op. And the third one, Guam. All right, well, we're going to find out what happens here on Guam. Okay, so I get a U.S. movement. So we, we come down on this and we check U.S. air raid procedure or resolve air raid procedure. Well, we don't have any air raids. No forces are moving this time. I can take the no op off of there. Put it over there. No U.S. advantage, no reduction in status. And now we have U.S. movement way over here. Okay, so for U.S. movement, I can move my task force one hex if I so choose. The question is, do I want to? <laughs> if I move this direction, I move farther away from these guys. Eventually, they're probably going to keep moving this way and this way. It's going to put me closer to Guam, which means I'm much more susceptible to an attack there two, three, I'm at four hexes, one, two, three, four hexes right now, and I'm a little worried that there's going to be an attack um, come out of Guam. So I'm going to have to get my cap up probably now, and uh, Guam's going to probably do something here. All right, we'll find out. Um, and let's see, I can move down this direction, I can move out this direction, one, two, three, four, it really doesn't gain anything, it gets me closer this way, which is... Uh, 
If I was here, I'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can just reach those guys right there with a, uh, a group. So I think I will, I think I'll move my task force to 1508. That's my movement. And now we go to Guam. That's my US movement. It's done. And now we do Guam. And Guam is the land-based aircraft. And this is new for me. So that's where we're going to go and check this out. Okay, so up here is the Guam air value and the scenario says it starts at a 7. Now there is an option if you're playing where you can randomize that roll of die and it can be anywhere from probably what 5 to 30 depending on what you roll there. We're going to use the scenario at 7. And then we have to check again for the range. So this is just like Japanese air raid generation table is the same. So the range for 0530 is 5. From Guam it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're in range. It gets a minus three modifier, die roll modifier for all ranges is minus three. Okay, so we have a minus three for the time of day, but the range is four. So it's plus two. So it's a minus one to the die roll. Four or less is no attack. So we use our modifiers here. Plus range game turn modifier. So our game turn modifier and the range modifier. Scenario nine we're not using. Minus two air raid from Guam. US fighters in hex. This is why I should have launched fighters and put them in the hex. But I didn't. Minus three if I have an advantage marker. I don't. So there, I, I read that somewhere, somewhere I read, they said you should try to keep fighters over, well that's why, it keeps them from attacking you, maybe. Okay, well, this is, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> okay, so they're at a minus one. So we're gonna roll on a minus one. And the roll is two, which makes that a one, no air raid. Okay, so Guam's off the board. All right. U.S. Air Movement segment. I don't have anybody there. Just fuel markers, initiate air searches. So I'm going to initiate my air search. I can only do this once, so i got to initiate them all at one time, and then they'll all move at one time, once per turn. So... I'm now, I'm going to initiate an air search. So I can initiate my air search. I'm going to take this off of 58.1 with these two SB2Cs right here. They're launching. I'm going to put them on the board. And they're coming down this direction right here. I want them to come... I want them to kind of come along this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They can get there to him. So I'm going to launch them. They come out two spaces. One, two, like this. And we mark them. So I'm doing a search number one standard, which means his max radius is ten. So I put that on him, and then I put my origin of search marker under this task force because this is the hex right here that we're going to calculate our, our radius of. The task force could move 
by the time I get back there, he may be in a different hex, but that's okay. I fly back to the task force, but I do all my calculation for the radius from that spot where he took off at. So it all generates from there. The first move is two. After that, you get four. Okay. You gain a bonus by having two aircraft searching together as opposed to one. So my question is, do I want to launch another one down this way and try to catch him um, and see if we can identify somebody? And I think I will launch. Do I have a single? I do. 58-4 is going to launch a single one. And they're going to come down this direction. So they're going to come out. They're coming out this way. And they will be max radius of two. And they are search group two. So we don't lose track. We keep these guys identified this way. Okay. That's my air searches. I don't have anything that I can resolve there yet. I go to my air operations on my carriers. Okay. Now I can launch if I want to. Now I know Guam's not going to come up again. The question is, do I, if I put fighters over Guam, they're going to burn fuel while they sit there. Every phase, they're going to burn off one fuel. But they could start with 16 fuel when they, when they uh, launch. So I could stick a couple fighters over Guam to kind of give me a little boost here. And they're not that far away in case they get a launch. There's not much of a chance of anybody launching against me this early in the morning. And, you know, I run the risk if I don't get them up quick, um, are they going to get there in time? If that Guam comes up on the first turn, they could get there. Now I have Cap, which could get there and save me. So I'm playing a little. I don't think I'm going to launch anybody just yet. Okay. Raise service raise anybody in servicing to ready okay so i have an sb2c here he can go from servicing to ready so he's up he's ready to launch nobody here nobody here okay so i'm set there hangar to or from servicing so do i want to raise anybody up to servicing uh i'm good there still good uh these are fighters i don't have anybody up here yet I just don't know what I'm going to do here yet. It's so early, and I don't want to get tangled up with the wrong thing there. But I think I'll move this F6F up and get him ready to come up. He can launch as a cap if I need him to. So we'll get him going up that way too. Okay, everybody else, I'm just still kind of hanging out down here with that. Don't have anybody to lower. Don't have anybody to land. We don't have any air combat, so we don't have to worry about any air so we go down here and we do advanced phase marker and we go to phase marker three we come back up now we move all raids we don't have any raids now we roll for our mission movement this turn and i'm just going to roll the red die <laughs> and it's going to be a six this time so if they come up they'll get a six so now our next segment is draw chits we're gonna whoo there went one he flew right out of there put him back in there mess up my stuff out of control <laughs> hit my uh stack hit my ships wow okay here we go put my hand over that better so that don't happen again chit number one is no op well I've got rid of all of those now. Second one is Task Force E. Third one is Task Force F. And that leaves us three chits, which is exactly what it was supposed to leave. Okay, so no op comes off. We're done with that. We got E and F. Resolve air raids. Well, again, these guys are more than five hexes away, so we know there's no air raids. So they're going to move. So E moves in direction 6. And he is in this zone right here. 
And six for him is that direction right there, due east. Okay. And F is also out of range. And F is going to move in direction six, which in this zone is also due east. So now we got some guys moving on us. Yeah, see, this is when it gets interesting. I don't have any searches launched yet, but that's okay. So E and F, they're done. No use advantage, no force reductions, no Guam, no subs, uh, move air missions. And when you get over here, search segment, hopefully you can see this, but it's once per turn. So I initiated my air search, which put him out, but they don't move yet. So they don't move till the next turn, okay? So nothing happens here with that. So I'm back to air operations, not changing anything there. So again, we don't have anything. We go advance the phase marker to phase four. We bring us back up. There are no Japanese raids. So now we roll for our mission segment move. And this one's gonna be four. Okay. And we have three chits left. The three chits are Force B, US subs, Force D. Okay. So Force B, that's our sequence. There is no air raid again for these guys. So Force B is going to move one hex in direction four. Now he's in this direction, so four brings him down this way. That's it for Force B. Subs. Now I can move submarines. Now this is interesting. This sub, I'm not going to move. The Kabbalah, I'm going to move him one hex this way. The Finback, I'm going to move him one hex this way. The Albacore doesn't have anything going on, but I'm going to leave him there. And the Stingray is moving. He's going to start. He's most likely going to move this direction. I'm going to move him this way right here. I'm going to try to head these guys off. That's what I'm trying to do with them. That's it for my U.S. subs. And then Task Force D, Delta. He's here, and on a four, he moves due east. Okay, so that gets through all of our movement. Air operations, I don't have anything I'm going to do. No air combat. The phase marker, we're done. Okay, we don't, we go to end of phase. We do update hit markers. We don't have any hit previous turn to permanent hit. Nope. Hit current turn to previous hit. Nope. Fire. Nope. Japanese submarine attack. No, because it's when we illuminate at night. Advance the game turn marker. So we're going to put our phase marker back to phase one. This is going to go back up to new Japanese forces. And way up here. We're going to go to 0650 on the day marker. Okay. We're going to call it here. We got one turn done. <laughs> but in all fairness, we did a lot, I think. And I feel good about it so far. We, um, we saw that Guam is going to be dangerous to us for location. We got a couple searches launched out here to try to find these guys. This search is, he's heading this, this direction here, so he's going to kind of move this way to get down there. This guy's coming along here. Um, he's kind of moving along this right here, trying to pick up this 4C. Uh, you know, I may get down there and find out there's, these are false contacts. But that's good if I do, because they're the ones that are closest. If I identify them, then I got a strike to go hit. So, you know, I got a couple things going on. 
I got the forces are moving up here now. My submarines are getting close to being able to get in contact. They have to end up in the same hex for contact to happen. But I actually got some good positioning here with them. I got the bang also out there that's hanging around. And at the start of the next mission, next turn, we're going to have more Japanese forces come on. And what happens is one third of these guys right here are going to come on. I believe there's 14 there and we round that down. So four more um, task forces are going to arrive somewhere in this board again. Okay. So this is cool. We're off to a good start. I can take all these, put them back in the cup because they're still in play. And we'll be adding more on the next turn. All right. That'll wrap this one up. I think that's a good start. I'd rather take it slow, make sure we get it right, make sure we explain everything and that we're doing it right. You guys will have a chance to comment probably before I get my next video out. And if I missed anything, you'll let me know. But give me a thumbs up, please. It helps the channel tremendously. And if you're new, please subscribe. Hope you're enjoying this. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. You got a lot of... A lot of people ask me in some of these games, are there ever any decisions to make or is it just dice rolling? In this one, it's all decisions. You're making all your decisions about when to launch, what to launch, where to move, and then you've got to defend against what the Japanese are doing, which you have no idea even, you know, are they real or not. So this is, uh, this, this is going to get really interesting, I think. All right, well... If you're uh, new to the channel, please subscribe, and uh, I would appreciate it, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Have a good one, everybody.